quite well. And Julian, how is this evening in Paris? It's Please tell beautiful. me it's lovely and and spring is springing and just things are beautiful. It's you know uh, winter is behind us now. Uh, the weather is great. The temperature is much better. Um, the sun is here, even though we're recording in the evening. I'm taking a slightly different setting from usual this weekend, probably the next one as well. Uh, so it's a good change, but I'll, I'll be back to my to my usual habits in a couple of weeks, I guess. So everything's perfect, and it looks like the weather is good for you as well. It is. We had yet another storm not happen yesterday, so we're just watching our lawns die, and it's very lovely weather in the process. So Okay. <laughs> So, look, I, I've i been thinking about what I would be telling you about today, uh, because I don't have a proper story. I didn't have any disaster or surprisingly positive story lately. So I thought about what could be interesting that I have experienced that is in the customer experience world, but slightly different from usual. And this this is what I came up with. This is a story that happened to me six, eight months ago, anyway, in, in the past 12 months. <clears throat> um, I've told you multiple times, I told you multiple stories about how I've had issues with my roof and water leaks and this kind of stuff. In the oh, past, no, right? not another roof story. And at the end of it, I'm not going to mention roof anymore, um, <laughs> but I'm going to mention insurances. Because oh. here is what I realized. I was thinking about this story, and, and I, I think we've covered pretty much everything we should have covered from that story. The only thing we did not talk about, the only thing I did not mention is when that happened, when I had that problem, when I told you my story, I said I contacted my insurance. But the truth is there were quite a few things that happened between the problem I encountered and me calling the insurance. And the very surprising, don't know if it's surprising, but the very interesting thing that happened is I had absolutely no idea what my insurance was. So I signed up, when I moved to this house, I signed up for an insurance in 2018, I guess, end of 2018. And the problems happened late 2020 or early 2021, I can't remember. So two years had passed. Um, by the time I needed to reach out to them. Are you telling me you don't review the details of your insurance policy every six months just to be on top of it? I Normally, I do it every Monday morning, but uh, I, nope. I've been behind schedule for, for quite some time. Uh, and and it, it's not just that I didn't know whether things were covered or not, because I'm kind of a anxious person, meaning that uh, mm. I don't necessarily take the most expensive insurance. I'm always looking for the cheapest one, but with the best coverage. So I take all options. However, unlikely is it is to ever happen, I usually take the option. I just think, hey, seven euros here, 10 euros there. Well, at the end of the day, you just sign up for an extra thousand bucks. But, <clears throat> you know, I'm this kind of person who needs to feel reassured that whatever happens, I'm going to be covered. So I know I have very good coverage, but I could not tell which insurance I picked. And I had to go through all of my files to try to find where the heck did I put my insurance paper? Could not find it. So what I did was going back to my payment receipt on my banking app to try to see. I probably paid for that insurance at some point. So going through all of my receipt, I should find something that tells me you paid that company at some point. And, and the funny thing is, I have a car insurance, which I can name very easily because I have their app and I believe I've shown that app in another story a few months back. Right, right, right. I have their app on my phone. I've had conversations through WhatsApp with them. Uh, so if I ever have a problem with, um, with my car, I know exactly who to call. I don't know whether they're going to cover me or not, but at least I know exactly what the insurance is and how to get out, get, um, get touch, get in touch with them. But for my house insurance, I had absolutely no idea. So I had to go to the bank, um, app figure out the receipt then i found the insurance um name i went on their website there was a login which i absolutely did not know and a password that who knows what password it right, could be right right <clears throat> so i went to their contact information and reached out to them and said look i have no idea what my customer number is or my contract number or i don't even know when i subscribed how much i pay i don't know the name of my plan pay you i know that much <laughs> All I know is I have a problem and I need you to fix that. Now, 
there, there was another story at the time where I explained that that was one of this perfect, uh, you know, small words at the bottom of the contract that say this specific type of problem is not going to be covered, regardless all the options you ticked already. Uh, but that's really not what I wanted to talk about today. What I wanted to talk about today is how difficult is it for insurance companies to build strong relationship with their customers, assuming that I'm not the only one, and I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one, who has no idea what their actual insurance is. And why I'm saying this is all the upsell, cross-sell opportunities you could have by engaging with these brands, if you don't even know what the brand is, and if they never proactively reach out to you except to renew the contract or get the payment through, right, right. how do you do business? And I think that's really an insurance thing. And that's why I wanted to bring that other insurance that um, that manages my, my car insurance and that I have an app for on my phone, because I think that's interesting. Some of the insurances seem to do it right and made it easy. And some others apparently are a bit too traditional. Uh, and and that was that's just it. That's my story for today. I just wanted to see, first of all, am I the only one? Um, and second of all, what could insurance companies do differently or do better in order to bridge that gap and make sure they build relationship? Oh boy, that's a good question. Um, I have a couple of random thoughts. Um, I'm not sure how it is in France, but in the U.S., Insur this is a very obvious problem insurance companies have. And a lot of how they counter it is massive advertising and marketing budgets. So, uh, you know, the funniest commercials in the United States for the last 20 years are from Geico, which is a big insurance company. And they've got the Geico Gecko and they just, you know, you can't watch television for more than 10 minutes without seeing a Geico. <laughs> um, and there's, Progressive has a similar strategy. They, they do that. So some of it in the U.S. is, and it's really barely about insurance. It's really about, oh, that little guy goes so cute, I, or that little gecko so cute. I'll go to them for my insurance. Um, it's just about brand. It's just about building that relationship and being friendly and funny. Um, the other thing they do here, and I don't, I don't I don't know how this really addresses it, but, um, and I've talked about this in other contexts, it, like I have State Farm and Mimi Lamb is my insurance agent. So I have a person that I talk to and that person has an office nearby and it makes, it gives me someone very tangibly to have a relationship with. And, you know, one of the things the insurance companies do here is they work really hard to bundle your packages. So I have my, we have our car insurance and our house insurance and whatever all through state farm. And they give you discounts to do that. So it's cost effective. Um, so between those, I end up having a reason to reach out, uh, you know, reasonably frequently. So that's the two strategies I've seen in the U S one is just spending literally billions of dollars to flood the airwaves being friendly and the other is having a person that's your primary contact who is local, who you can work with and having a broad set of stuff. So it's not once every five years that I need to call. Both strategies, which are incredibly expensive. Yes. Um, the first one, that would not work for me because, yes, there are probably some insurances I don't watch TV, so it's hard to tell whether we have this kind of insurance insurance ads. Maybe maybe we do. I'm just not aware of it. Uh, that would not help my situation because, again, I did not pick the most famous insurance. I picked, you know, I use, well, you're familiar with uh, online travel agents because you've had bad experiences with that. Right, right. I, I use uh, online insurance compar oh. comparison tools, right? Sure, uh, I sure. don't look through them, but at least they give me the comparison. I'm pretty sure they get to commission at the end. Um but I, they do. I use those tools to compare them. And therefore, you usually don't end up with the most famous one. You end up with the most affordable one um, based on your specific criteria. Because, again, I don't take the cheapest of the cheap. I take the cheapest of 
whatever has a full coverage. Right, so, right. so I end up with one that's not famous, um, but cost effective. And therefore, they probably won't spend billions of dollars on ads. And truthfully, I'm not sure I would go for the cute gecko, uh, regardless of how <laughs> cute that could be. <clears throat> I, I, I mean, they don't exist in France, so I may, but I don't think that would be my thinking. I, I would go again with, you know, cost and, and coverage. So I, I don't think that would work for me because the brand is not something that I value for that specific product. The personal relation, I think that's brilliant. That's what every company should do. However, I don't know for insurances. I had something somehow similar back in Hong Kong with an insurance broker that I had very good relationship with and he would advise me and it, that kind of worked out. I don't think that would work in France simply because the turnover is so high. I don't. I can't even build a proper relationship with my bank manager because every six months it feels like I have a new one. Um, so I, I'm wondering whether, you know, in the insurance world, if I reach out to that person every two years, it's probably a different person every single Somebody time. Somebody else. But it, how it runs in the U.S., I don't know how it runs elsewhere. Um, and it's interesting. There, there are two different flavors. There's a broker, which you just mentioned, and that person sells multiple different insurance policies, from, at least in the U.S., from multiple different companies. And it's a, it's a sales job. They're making commission. And I guess you must be able to make good money at that because people do it for a long time. Similarly, like with State Farm, it's an agent. They only sell State Farm. But it's a similar thing where they're working on commission and they're getting, you know, they get well paid, but only with what they sell. So the insurance companies, you know, it's a win-win. Again, it, would you use them if you're looking to save every dollar? Probably not, because the markup of the insurance person's commission could well price them out of Julian Rio's wheelhouse. All right. So that's I, I'm not even sure. I, I used a broker in Hong Kong, as I said. I don't even know whether that exists in France. I, actually, I think it does, because the company I signed with, it was probably a broker. I think there was another bigger insurance behind that I'm not even aware of. Uh, but I don't have a dedicated contact. When I need to call them, I end up on a traditional Absolutely. contact center. I have no idea who I'm talking to, and I have no idea whether that's going to be the same person following my hmm. uh, my father next time. But what do you think about that other insurance I mentioned that has, I don't know if an app is a solution to everything, because these days everyone creates an app, but at least, at least they remain top of mind. I mean, that must count for something, right? Yeah, and I think I, very much so. And I think part of it, I think that's part of why bundling works so well in the U.S. is now I have enough stuff with my insurance company that I will download the app, that there's there's an actual need for it because it's car insurance and stuff like that. You know, just home insurance, you, never, you, you, you already made the point. You're never going to download your home insurance app because – you won't touch it for three years. Um, so I think that's a good strategy. Uh, it, Unless it's... they add value. You know, that's something I'm missing. I mean, this app is pretty cool because I know if I have a problem and you have higher chances to get a problem with your car on the road than with your home, staying home, right? Um, not necessarily right. always true, at least in my case, but <laughs> you could have problems either way. But <laughs> I, I feel more secure <laughs> having this with me on the road because I'm not going to search all my bank accounts to figure out what my car insurance is if I have an accident, right? So I need to be a little bit more efficient than that. I'm kind of lacking added value. I've seen a bunch of stuff. For example, this insurance, they offered something that I found incredibly interesting. They sent me ads about... If you're a good driver, we're going to make you pay less. So um, they give you a chip to put on your car. I have no idea how that works. Um, to check whether you are within speed limit, whether you brake too harsh or, you know. And, and based on that, they will tell you, you're a great driver. We're going to decrease your your cost by 20% or, uh, yeah, you might drive a bit better. Let's increase it a little bit, which is fair. Not compatible with my insurance. Uh, I tried to apply, say, not compatible. And I was wondering, why do you even send it to me in the first place then? Um, <laughs> <laughs> and and, and they, they had a bunch of similar, very innovative, very cool stuff, but I'm kind of lacking the added value. It lacks customization. Uh, and I think it could be better than that. I think that is the, I mean, you, you have hit a bazillion dollar question, which is how do you make an insurance? What, you know, auto insurance, yes, but home insurance, 
I mean, I, I guess maybe you have um, home maintenance app that just is sponsored by your insurance company. You could do something like that. But, in, I mean, there's just no – there's an incredible guitarist uh, named Michael Hedges. He had a great quote. Insurance is betting that something's going to – is betting against yourself that something's going to go wrong for you. Do you really want to be flirting and talking to the person that made that bet against you? Um, it, 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 although I guess they're betting on you, not having a problem. But um, it, it, it's just there is no need purely for the insurance to ever do it. And that's exactly what you want, right? You don't want your roof to flood anymore. Um, you know, and so, yeah, I mean, something like, here's the home improvement app and I'm going to give you discounts on contractors and stuff like that and just and, splash their name all over it. Maybe something I, like that. I kind of like the idea of gamification as well. Meaning I don't know how relevant that would be for home insurance, but if I were to receive every now and then, definitely not every week, not even every month, but every now and then if I were to receive, Hey, do you have like a smoke alarm in your home? If you had one, we could decrease your yearly subscription by X dollars. Or did you know that a, uh, heater that is over 20 years old may actually be dangerous for your home and would be happy to help you change it and find the right contract, whatever it is, right? But some kind of gamification, not just so that people save money and that you get better customers, but just for the sake of getting back in touch with them. So the that they remember you exist because as soon, you know, many companies consider that getting customers on the phone is actually a cost. But the truth is when you have your customer on the phone, you have the opportunity to upsell, to cross-sell. And that's when the bundle actually comes in because you may not be able to sell the whole suite of products on day one. But if you get me on the phone, that's always the time to say, hey, by the way, do you know we do car insurances as well? Do you know we do X, Y, Z? And that could be a great opportunity to rebuild that relationship with your customers. You, you should be more proactive. That That's probably my, my thinking. Yeah, I, I think that's a great point to close on with this. I think that's... You, summed it up very well right there um and it's it's a tough nut to crack because i yeah i i like that idea you know once a quarter here's a, a homeowner's tip for your homeowner's insurance not too often not going to bug you but and even if you just totally ignore those there's going to come a moment like you had where it's like okay what insurance do i have you know you can go back and find that message and so it's kind of putting themselves in your archive a little bit. Exactly. Exactly. I love that. Look, that was not much of a story, but I do feel like it brought a bunch of good ideas that uh, we and insurance co uh, companies could probably explore. That would be less you know, expensive than major TV channels advertising or single point of contact for each and every individual. So maybe something worth looking into for anyone working in, a, in the insurance world. I like it. Sounds Perfect. Good. We've, solved, we've solved world hunger for the insurance <laughs> industry today. Awesome. Thank you so much for your guidance as usual, Max. I wish you have a beautiful week and uh, let's talk about your problems next week. All right. That sounds good. Thanks, Julian. Take Bye. care.